Right. So one thing I want to say is that there are many faces of the struggle in Uganda, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, I may be the Facebook face. <laughs> there are Twitter faces. There are street faces. There are rural and urban faces. And that there are very many other mm, faces of the struggle. If you mean vocal or, you know, representatives, public figures who have identified with the struggle, there are very, very many others apart from Chisa Vesiji and Bobby Wine. And I think I am quite flattered by yourself to be named besides these two men. Men I admire immensely. Men I look up to immensely. That's the first thing I wanted to, 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 to just preface to my, to my answer, my response to you. Dr. Chizavesije is my mentor. I mention him many times because he is my mentor. And more and more, a lot of his cautions and warnings and uh, lessons to us Ugandans have, they are profound because they have been proved true um, in, in the last election season, in, in this particular election season. You were, you know, you were in the 70 when they were in the bush struggle, Dr. Chisa Besige was his medical doctor. And so perhaps he knows him much better than a lot of us who joined the struggle much, much later. Um, and so a lot of what he said was found problematic by the younger liberation struggleists who are led predominantly by uh, Bobby Wine. A number of people left the movement that Dr. Chisa Besige had led prior to the rise of Bobby Wine. And many people left um, FDC and the Defiance Movement and joined People Power Movement and joined NUP later, which is led by um, Robert Chagulani, Bobby Wine. I think for me, that I've been one of the people, because I'm FDC and I'm people power. I'm a member of people power, although I refuse to join National Unity Platform. I am one of the people who has been berated, insulted, uh, you know, condemned by Ugandans because I called for unity of the opposition way before, uh, I think in, must have been June of 2020. Um, I totally believe that the question of reclaiming our power, our dignity, our rights, our constitution, our public pass from dictator Yori Museveni is not a one-man show, it's not a one-party show, it's not a one-region show. It's going to take a concerted effort from all of us. Mm. One of the problems we have is that, you know, Elective democracy, multi-party democracy, demands that we stay fragmented in our different political parties. Political parties are important. I contested in the politics of my country through FDC, which is a political party. Some people claim that I lost the election because I chose to stay in the FDC and I did not join the NUP. So political parties have made me and maybe they have put my current uh, political career where it is. They are important. Mm. In the post-election moment, when a lot of severe lessons have been learned uh, by those of us who should be learning lessons from the experience mm. of running against your seven, running against members of the opposition, running against each other, the most important lesson for me is now that the elections are over, they've been rigged, and your seven is going to swear himself into office, whether we like it or not. Unless we work quickly to reorganize ourselves and our strategies and to unite, there is no way we are going to be able to be effective against a militant, violent dictator. I totally believe in the need for unity. We need to draw from the wisdom and experience of Dr. Chisa Vesige. Mm -hmm. 
we need to draw from the youthfulness and vigor and energy and perhaps naivety of <laughs> Bobby Wine. We need to bring on the military generals, uh, Mugisha Muntu and uh, uh, the others from from the opposition guys who run against Yoweri Museveni. We need to bring on board the older political parties, Democratic Party, and Uganda People's Congress. We need to unite beyond our political party factions and also include corporate society and civil society and the public media. We need to unite in Uganda. Mm -hmm. Disunity right now is created because I think that that's what elections do. They force us to work in multi-parties, which mean we cannot unite which mean we have to work away from each other and work against each other and compete ourselves against and amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. The competition is over. We were beaten hands down by a dictator, not because he won the election, but because he has systemically uh, enshrined the rigging of elections, right? Mm -hmm. Through a number of mechanisms, we can talk about one day. Mm -hmm. And so unity is important. My role as a woman one of my most important roles in this post-election moment is to keep calling for unity because I know that I have a voice that can be taken seriously. Maybe they will not take the content seriously, but they will listen to me because mm. I'm just a woman. Mm. I'm just, just a woman making noise. What is she saying this time? And so I keep calling for unity. Your question about why it has been difficult to unite is an important question. Until we are able to analyze the stumbling blocks in our liberation struggle in Uganda, that which is stopping us from uniting, until we are able to name those problems among ourselves as the opposition, we cannot come together. So I totally believe in unity. I also think that unity does not mean agreement, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think that unity is necessarily comfortable. I don't think it's easy. And I, I think it's going to be negotiated and we have to navigate the process. But if we all decide we are going to work together and come together, come together, particularly, you know, perhaps about a cause, perhaps in particular actions, but we are all uh, mobilized and conscientized and educated and sensitized about the need to work together mm -hmm. on particular issues, in particular fashions, and we're given a program. Unity is possible. All right. I think you guys should unite and, and try and form a united form. But otherwise, I don't think, uh, I think the only I person... I agree who with you. Yeah, that's the I only totally person agree who, with you. All right. So if you don't unite, I can tell you that the only person who can deal with somebody then would be God, but not opposition. Because clearly, as well... Uh, God the, still the, works. The, 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 matters the of life and death. <laughs> matters of life and death uh -huh. are sometimes left in the hands of God. But I think that for me... I would like to invite Ugandans not to just leave the matter with God alone because we can't wait for death to take your M7 away. I think it will be very good for history to be written and Ugandans are written down as having worked with the hand of God to oust a dictator and to show him during his lifetime what a post M7 Uganda would be like. All right, and uh, I'll be waiting to see that. I'll be waiting to see how the the, the opposition is going to unite. Uh, the the comrades in revolution are going to unite in Uganda and try to fix that what you have had a problem with in Uganda leadership. Others without the unity, uh, trust me or trust us or trust me and you, the struggle will be in vain. Now, with all the years of the struggle and decades of abductions and deaths and shootings and government extras and all that, what do you say are the gains that you've made as Ugandans in the, in the, in the struggle, the political struggle? A lot of gains. There have been a lot of gains. Um, in a moment, in a moment of arrogant insanity, Yoweri Museveni threatened and claimed that in 2020 there will be no opposition in Uganda. He will have crushed our entirety. Okay. One of my celebrations, which many people do not agree with, is that in 2021, January 14th, we had viable, strong opposition parties that produced presidential candidates to contest against Yoweri Museveni, right? Mm -hmm. 
So our historical parties, but also um, new parties that were formed after he declared there will be no opposition in Uganda. So there, there's a, the Alliance for National Transformation, ANT, and the National Unity Platform, NUP, are two relatively newer parties that that joined the struggle against um, pres the presidency of Yoweri Museveni. And we also had a number of independent candidates who joined the presidential race. And so one of the first celebrations is that in spite of the danger, the real danger to the lives of Ugandans who dare challenge, contest, run, run against, um, Yoweri Museveni's entrenchment into power. Indeed, we have a strong caliber of leaders, men, and in the case of the presidential election, just one woman, who were able to challenge Yoweri Museveni, right? And so the opposition is not dead. We are not going anywhere. We are still alive, and we're still quite a strong force to reckon with. If the playing field had been free and fair, perhaps... Yoweri Museveni would have been ousted by this contestation of political parties. But the playing field is not free and fair. Mm. So that's the first celebration. I, I celebrate that we have a viable opposition. Part of the gains have been our ability to expose and change the narrative around Yoweri Museveni as a liberator, a freedom fighter, a person who works for the people. He is now known to be public enemy number one because of the sort of exposés and expositions that a number of us in the liberation struggle have been able to do. <laughs> when a person is arrested using a constitutional means, the police is involved, the person is charged, investigations are made, and they're arraigned before a court uh, within 48 hours, and if they need to be remanded to a prison while investigations and the trial proceeds, they are taken to a prison facility and their uh, location is known, right? Mm. The existence of abductions that are illegal, irregular, and totally unconstitutional uh, is an exposure of, of, of how the military regime is using state institutions of the army and the police and the prisons and other paramilitary, extra-military, I don't know if they're extra-constitutional, uh, military outfits to abduct Ugandans simply because they dare uh, express you know, views that are contrary to praise singing of your civilians exposing that dictator Museveni is using our state institutions to do this, is using our armed personnel and armed uh, officers of Uganda mm. to do his dirty work and beat down the uh, opposition, has, must be celebrated. I mm. mean, how does it's one okay. provide evidence against a dictator? And I think that the opposition has been able to do it. Mm exposing the repression that exists, right? The shutting down of the internet, I think for me, he wouldn't have shut down the internet and shut down and, 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 and suspended the um, licenses of foreign correspondents and required uh, public media personnel to register again if we were not a viable opposition offering alternative narratives. Mm -hmm. But the fact that he had to go to the limit and extent of shutting down the internet means that he was trying to shut down our alternative narratives and rhetoric and discourse that would have shown him up for the dictator and oppressor that he is. And so shutting down the civil society, how do we show that he's actually shutting it down and repressing it if not through the, the, the work and, and, and contestations of, 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 of the opposition? And so have there been gains? There have been some. Mm -hmm. We have been able to lobby the international community, the regional and African and even East African neighbors mm -hmm. are now in the know of the failures of government and governance in our country. Is it good enough? Perhaps it's not. I have heard people say that the opposition in Uganda is not 
as strong as the opposition elsewhere, perhaps in Kenya. When we choose non-violent means... We actually don't have an opposition here. You're lucky. You guys are better off. Our opposition is in government. There's something, there's something called the handshake in Kenya. <laughs> I, 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 will not, I will not allow myself to be dragged into comments onto the Kenyan political scene right now. Mm-hmm. I'm, uh, I'm seeking refuge here. Uh, you don't and want so, to poke the leopards down here. <laughs> I don't know if the leopards here have anuses. I don't even know if you have leopards here. Oh, I bet they do. Anyway, uh-huh. And so I, I, I think that uh, a number of people have have said to me, Stella, maybe you should um, rent or hire some Jaluos and take them to Uganda. It's a very ethnic sort of um, conversation mm-hmm. about who can protest the most. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, I've had some people offering me Gikuyu. Mm-hmm. Okay, go to the Kikuyu or go to the Jaluo. They are very good at, 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 at doing these things. But like I said before, I am not going to uh, fall for the temptation of entering the politics of a country where I am a, you know, an asylum. seeking. Yes, I am an asylum seeker here, and um, I will not go into that conversation. But, but the opposition in Uganda... People can diss us, people can dismiss us. I think we've done a very, 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 very good work. And uh, what we need to now do is reorganize ourselves because most definitely Yuri Museveni has uh, vulgarized our judiciary, our parliament, our, our you know military and police, our armed forces, and our public media to ensure that he gets reinstated into power for the next five years. And it's up to us to offer the challenge that we must. I believe he can be ousted from power using nonviolent means even before 2026 when the next elections are due. Mm. All right. Uh, as we roll up to uh, almost reaching our tail end, I want to read uh, some comments here. Uh, I'm seeing all your, all your Teresa Evans says, secondly, how does she intend to approach LGBT issues in a country a country of asylum, Kenya, which has outlawed homosexuality? Douglas Nyakamu Ngoro, watching from Kawa, wish we had a woman like that in Kenya. The Kenyan women people purport to be leaders are either corrupt by their way into power through being uh, laid by the iron mighty uh, fearful name. It, all right. Interesting. Um, Shamira Mesa, of course, there in Uganda are taking the critical section. Right. Oh, Terry Evans, please uh, let me understand what is the interview's position, interviewee's position about LGBTI issues and as they are today in Uganda. I don't know if you can answer that. Right. So like I say to you, my specialization is human sexualities. I have done a number of research projects uh, while I was still at Macquarie University with the vibrant LGBTIQ community in Uganda. And I think that a lot of my my animation and passion to protest draws from lessons that I learned from the urban refugee community, uh, uh, LGBTI communities in Uganda. And so as a queer scholar and a queer activist, because I locate myself centrally as a person who believes that LGBTIQ citizens deserve all the human rights and constitutional protections that the country provides. I am an LGBTIQ uh, activist and scholar. Um, I have participated in gay pride. I have participated in a number of civil actions to contest against the anti-homosexuality bill and the anti-homosexuality act. And I align myself strongly with the LGBTIQ community in Uganda. Part of the reasons that are given for my performance in the last elections in Uganda are because of my public stance on on the human rights and the need to protect the human rights of sexual and gender minorities in my country. And a number of people who believe in conservative culture and religion think that I should not have vocalized this. But one of my nominees in the national um, uh, for, 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 for the national elections mm. was a transgender man. I'm proud to have associated myself with him. He walked with me to the electoral commission. I was nominated under the glaring lenses of cameras. And he was there in his transgender self, registered him. He used to be 
uh, used to have a female name before mm. and he now goes by his masculine name because he has transitioned as a transgender man and he nominated me into the national elections uh, of my country and so i had strong support from from the community even in my politics um and so the question is what is my stance on lgbtiq people in uganda it is consistent they are human beings they are ugandan citizens they are protected by the constitution of my country they are marginalized by a largely homophobic legislature or parliament which does not understand that god creates us the way that he creates us and god is not sorry that he created homosexuals as homosexuals and he created heterosexuals as heterosexuals mm-hmm. i'm a heterosexual mother i'm a cisgender person it does not stop me from aligning with a highly marginalized ostracized penalized and criminalized population of ugandans who have done nothing wrong apart from be themselves Currently the opposition in Uganda is undergoing a lot of marginalization brutalization by the state mm-hmm. and I ally I I ally myself and position myself strongly with the opposition there is no crime with that like as there is no crime with me aligning myself strongly with the LGBTIQ community in Uganda I know that one day Uganda will be progressive and we shall remove any form of legislation that criminalizes love between adults above 18 years of age and I, th- I hope that one day um it will be safe for Ugandans of alternative sexual orientations and gender identities to be citizens in in my country and to be protected i think that if we don't protect sexual minorities lgbtiq people we risk um losing a lot of the public health gains the human rights gains we have made as a country all right i also think a debo dan dipsy thinks there's no difference between uh bobby wine's bulletproof uh, vest car and dr sela nyansi is going to exile the argument isn't uh, strong enough but i am glad she is open to honest conversations even if it means questioning our own actions and decisions and i think that's actually what is uh, profound for me the fact that you're also open for criticism julius rockefeller says sela nyansi may be state funded at this moment looking at all th- that she is doing insulting bobby wine who is fighting for freedom all right uh joela kay from or motel is is tell us demonstrating the division in opposition will ever keep the tyrants in power julius rockefeller is just great that's all talking about the lack of unity within opposition actually uh, talk keep came says is a literature guru to say the least great following conversation thank you so much uh lubenga if you want to bobby want to have art yet you to cough come on stella nyanzi usema rudi nyumbani tuje tumaliza nyumbani come on we finished this and all right keep tight keep talk keep text is making sense stella nyanzi recognize bobby you just desperately want the discussion with him all right okay Uh Jamil Hamet says she left us today. Uh Jeroborio Liki Sara Jeroborio says I love how you pronounce Uganda. Viva Stella the struggle continues. All right. Frank Senior Jones says Stella Nyanzi is always open minded. Wilfred is watching us from Capsabet. All right. I want to ask you three questions that might actually almost seem to be a, a strain on its own as we uh, to tell it. Ask you as a human politician. And we celebrated a couple of weeks ago, ago we celebrated uh, the women's uh, day or the women's week and we've been discussing about the gains and the journeys of african women and also generally uh, women in the world where they have suffered the discrimination they have suffered over time their interest in politics the progress that we made in terms of empowering women taking them to school and giving them a space at the table to have a discussion and i would want to know having been part actively being actively a woman who has been involved in the issues of national discourse having in, been involved in politics and all that what did you say are the things that women go through the challenges that women go through that is fast now the second is women complain about leadership political leadership in countries and yet the uh, data and research has shown that women form the biggest chunk of uh, of voters in any country What is stopping women? What is stopping women from electing people like Stella Nyanzi to champion for their rights? And again, lastly, or the third question is what are the gains that we've made in terms of seeking an equal space for women? Stella? Right. So we have five minutes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I'll make it seven. And we have three questions, but also I want to All right. You use as much minutes as you want maybe within 10 minutes. 
I think I want to celebrate the the comments from your audience. Um, they're very generous. They haven't insulted me this time, or maybe you have just <laughs> chosen out. No, no, no. I've, I've actually read all the comments. I've read all the comments. I think I've read all the oh, comments. They're very sweet. So yeah. I want to thank your audience at least for walking the journey of our two hours with me. And for those who saw some sense in what I said, I appreciate that. I just want to talk about the one comment about Stella Nyazi is state funded and she is um, she's been compromised by by Yoweri Museveni's regime. If anybody has been listening and they still think like that, I think what I say to them is to reiterate my 2017 poem a post that got me into trouble. Museveni matako mutako. I'm very you know. I'm glad and delighted to say that on the taco, right? So <laughs> on, on, on Gerald Bitoko. The taco, the taco, and the taco. <laughs> and I'm on Gerald Bitoko's program. On Gerald, on, on, on the program. How are you going to baptize me, Stella? No, no, no. It's, mm-hmm. it's Ugandans who say this. So let me, let me do a little poem as, as I go into the women question. Mm-hmm. On the program, the taco, Presented by Gerald Bitoko, I want to reiterate my initial post all that you are a seven mutako matako or matako matako. So the question about women and uh, the challenges we face. <laughs> L- let me st- let me steal your seconds a bit. I'm saying there's a comment. I want you to tell me what no. this comment means in your baganda. It says uh, that is from Omuwalu Wabobi. It says emotoka yarona abantu. Ne bathi day party he kwebusa magesi gwe bewari ongenda o Kenya wagenda nani. What does that mean? <laughs> so the first part is a motokaya luma abantu and that is the car. So I think the bulletproof car heart or pained people look so whoever muwalawa Bobby means Bobby's daughter or Bobby's girl. Um I had to make a point about Bobby Wine being as infallible as any other leader, right? I could not uh, give up the moment, the opportune moment of utilizing the vanity of his bulletproof car to make my statement. I could have talked about the beating up of women in the national unity platform. I could have talked about the use of sex in exchange for flag membership or party cards in the national unity platform. I could have talked about the lack of financial capital, you know, fi- financial capital accountability to donors and other local contributors and fundraisers in the national unity platform. I could have talked about a whole range of selectivism and uh, preferential treatment and sectarianism within the national unity platform. I did not write about any of the dirt that I have heard about and seen in national unity platform. I wrote about the bulletproof car. If people think that I want to injure the reputation of Bobby Wine on National Unity Platform, they are mistaken. If I want to injure and damage National Unity Platform, I have a lot of grievances. I have heard and, and witnessed and observed. But I chose to write about a bulletproof vest and a bulletproof car, right? There are so many ways of eliciting a conversation that demands for accountability and transparency in our different opposition formations, I chose the easiest. So it could, it could have been worse. <laughs> it could have been, yeah, because I have the ammunition to do that. Like I said, I, I, have, the, I have the ammunition to write dangerous poems. So people in National Unity Platform do not dare me. They need to if be I grateful. To damage, <laughs> if I want to damage National Unity Platform, I can. If I want to injure Robert Bobby Wine, I can. But that is not my objective. I'm not a malicious person. I'm an ally saying, 
let us be self-critical. Okay. Right. I lose nothing because right now I'm in Kenya. Mm. Right? <laughs> I'm in Kenya. I can give up on the struggle. That sounds but safe. I choose to sounds keep very poking safe. my nose. <laughs> keep poking my nose in the affairs of the opposition in in um in 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 in, in Uganda. So about the women question, I'm a woman. I participated in the elections. I did not go to parliament, but I learned so many things. I want so many hearts and minds that challenges are very many for women such as myself to participate in elections, particularly if we are not participating in the regime party, if we are participating in the opposition party. Perhaps what you shall do, Gerald, be talk is mm. to invite me another day to talk about the challenges sure. and opportunities mm. that women are facing because it will be totally, uh, it will be a disservice to women. Mm-hmm. In the that, that's what I realize, actually. You'll be parade. doing it an injustice if we say we are going to discuss it within five minutes. Yeah. So let right. me not disrespect other women in the political terrain by just saying I appreciate the time and I thank you very much and I thank your audience for giving me the platform. I enjoyed myself. Where I have caused offense, well, bear with me. I am a woman in exile <laughs> trying to make meaning of a country uh, that mm-hmm. is run by a dictator. Thank you very much, Gerald Bitok. And thank you to your audience for the tackle. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye. All right, somebody asking, who is this lover you've talked to, you've told us about? Oh, he's a guy I love and admire and politics. So when you bring it back to talk about the challenges of women in politics, I can talk about the highs and lows of my relationship with the man in the National Unity Platform uh, while I'm in the FDC. He's an amazing, amazing gentleman, and I send him my love, and I hope he's fine. He was injured by the state securities who, you know, they they bashed and mashed up his genitals while they were interrogating him. But I pray for his healing. I know he's making a lot of progress. And um, I wish him well. I can only hope the instruments of power are safe. Because I hope they didn't match um, I am a Nalongo. I studied and specialized in human sexualities. We can always take care of those instruments. <laughs> He's lucky. My instruments <laughs> work lucky. well. Huh? So let us let us wait for his own to to recover because trauma, I, I think even beyond the genitals, the mind and the body and the soul can be traumatized much sure, longer sure. than the erection. If 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 erection returns, we, we still have to work with minds and hopes and souls. But yes, I have a lover and I love him very much, although he's from the National Unity Platform. Mm-hmm. So I have a vested interest in Bobby Wine's party. It has to work because my lover is because a your lover is supporter there. of that party. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think Kenyans are trying to try their shots. In Kenya, they shoot their shots. They don't care. So uh, I think I they are trying to try their luck. Poly, poly, polygamy is, or polyamory is, it, if it can be done by men, it can be done by women. So tell your Kenyan brothers. Mm-hmm. There's still chance. The, the lover man stayed in Uganda. So you, you, as you can still do, uh, you can still have an embassy here. Ger- Gerald, are you single? <laughs> Maybe you can have that discussion of <laughs> All right, I'm not single. <laughs> I'm definitely uh, taken. Yeah. Okay. Are you polyamorous? Uh I've not considered it. Okay. I'm let's to. talk after let's talk uh, with tea <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> because I was saying actually yesterday in my profile, a lot of Kenyans were trying to shoot their shots. I don't know, maybe someone could be lucky, someone could be not. You never know where it could end. Like you said, okay, your heart has four chambers. So one the lava from NUP has taken one chamber. We still have three chambers left. So the Kenyans can still try. Do they pay? Like what's what's the position on commercial sex work? I could be a, a commercial sex worker. Aya. Dana. Aya. Hey, hey, Stella. Yeah, yeah. Keep talking, keep talking, keep talking. <laughs> Mugabe Derek says, I'm finished now. Keep talking, keep talking, keep talking. Says, what's on me? Oh, check is that all Licky Sara Cheronte says, Be in your eyes, like Spain. My prayers to you and your love. Oh, yeah. They have prayed also for your lover in NUP. So I hope he's safe and he, he, he shall keep well. All right. Uh, somebody saying, yeah, Krisha, you're right. I mean, things could, you never know. Cantola Peteko says only arrogance makes this lady think she can destroy NUB or NUP or Bobby Wine. Uh, Brian Kiyamba, Ugandans are so gallipo. They don't understand Stella or the few who are benefiting from the regime confuses. Uh, when the regime confuses the masses. All right. Uh, 
Nyamalema Silva says Stella enjoy ugali and nyama mushomo that is nyama choma down here. I hope you've taken some. Uh, Jeff your boy Gerald Bitok ask ask uh, to tell us about the dog she found recently as a new boyfriend. Maybe uh, okay. I don't I, I, I don't I don't I want to believe that uh, there's anything going on with the dog. Maybe it was one of the poems again. I, I want that's what I want to believe until she disagrees. Stella, the dog, finally. Um, no, 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 no. I have a friend. Um, I have a friend called Freddy. He's a dog. And uh, I, I had a fallout with a member of friends, you know, deep friendships, um, people who did not understand that my poems are an offering to the liberation struggle, an offering to Uganda, an offering of of love to 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 the world and they thought because they found my uh, poems very critical that they could gag me and stop me from criticizing uh, Bobby Wine although I love him and I admire his leadership and so these friendships uh, become very problematic and you know I, I chose to walk away in order to retain my ability to keep being the critique that I have uh, self-fashioned myself into. And so I walked away from people and I walked to a dog for friendship and loyalty. And the dog, Freddy, does not... Um, he listens to the poems. I read to him the poems. The, the dog, Freddy, does not walk away from me as long as I'm feeding him. He's my friend. And um, a number of perverted minds think I am practicing bestiality. I do not support bestiality. I do not believe that I am going to have a sexual relationship with a dog. But for now, in terms of an exilee who has lost friends momentarily because they think they can tell me what to write and what not to write, I would rather have the friendship and company of a dog. And so I'm learning to um, rest and play and be with an animal. I've had dogs before as guard dogs, but not as uh, pets. And so it's a new experience for me in exile to learn how to work with a dog as a friend. And he's a very good friend. Don't be jealous of Freddy. There's no sex between me and Freddy. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay, uh, I can see Licky. Licky is also asking if I'm if I'm single. I mean, you guys, these girls are shooting their shots straight and fast. Anyway, thank you guys for joining in. I'm not single, and I've not considered uh, po is it polygamy or polio, whatever that you've mentioned. Polyamory yeah. to, to to love po many is oh, to be polyamorous. polyamorous. Okay, so I've not considered yet. Uh, so when I consider. Maybe I'll give another declaration because I'm seeing people are already asking the question that you asked straight and fast. Anyway, thank you guys for joining us. Someone is saying yes, Stella Nancy is a strong woman. And I'm uh, saying Mungu akubariki sana. So I wish you all the very best. That is from uh, that is from Shamira. Dr. Lanyasi is an open-minded and strong woman. As a Ugandan woman, I'm proud of you, Stella. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Nyamera says dogs are friendly. Until next time, uh, Stella, I hope to see you again, especially we talk the issues of, uh, about the issues on women. I mean, that's a discussion that we need to have in isolation and actually have my choice and get to know that. What's the progress we're making in terms of empowering our women? And also, what is the danger? Are we taking the balance in terms of pushing the women agenda? Do we get a balance also between balancing the women getting up and also ensuring that we have the boy child as well coming in in terms of ensuring that these people we have an equal partnership because you've talked about your lover in NUP if we don't have a lover in NUP and a lover in NUP in the revolution we don't empower the men as well then we might get to a point where we only have women running revolutions and dogs I as have friends two sons. <laughs> yeah so we need to empower all of them so that we ensure that we have a good place uh Liki sarah she wrote your thank you for the platform thank you so much Liki. Uh, i'll see you i don't know she's from uganda i think so let me tell you all right I'll see you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you, Nyamira. Thank you, King uh, Kamwele. Since my best number Stella. Uh, George Okech, Koriga, thank you so much for tuning in. And everyone that Takla has been online, I really appreciate you. To Stella, I want to wish you a very good stay in Kenya. When you feel safe and when you feel you can interact with some of us, we can always have some Nyama Choma and Ogali has been, has been advised by our rightful audience. So don't worry, Kenyans are very good people. Yeah, we don't have yeah. tears, we don't, we don't clobber people. We are very peaceful and we love visitors. No better again is So Karibu uh, Kenya Stella. I hope to see you soon. Until then, take care of yourself. To the tackle class, the tackle. And the tackle ends now. Bye bye. And see you again tomorrow.